And dear students, in the last class, we are discussing about the methodology by which we can generate electricity from ocean thermal. And also, we have learned the same technology can be applied for generation of other items like uh, distillates through distillation process and the water what we can get out of the analysis can also be applied for various applications especially in marine applications. So, today we will be discussing about uh, some of the important aspects of ocean thermal energy conversion systems and analysis of open cycle OTEC plan and we will solve some numerical problems to strengthen the understanding of design of a ocean thermal energy conversion system. So, as we have learned like more than 95 percent of the solar radiation which is incident on the ocean surface is absorbed up to a depth of about 6 meter and its surface temperature is about 27 to 30 degree maximum and if we go deeper and deeper its temperature decreases and at a depth of about 1 kilometer we can get the temperature of the fluid is about 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. So, that is how we said surface water is much warmer than deep water and this temperature difference between the surface and the deep water is used to generate electricity with the help of a thermodynamic cycle called organic Rankine cycle and maybe you can name as Rankine cycle only. And these ocean thermal energy conversion systems are suitable for base load generation because there is much fluctuation of temperature difference when it is installed in a particular site. Also, we have studied the suitable sites for installation of this kind of technology. It is most suitable within the latitude of 20 degree north and 20 degree south. We can have a look to this figure, this color codes are used. So, red color indicates more than 24 degree Celsius followed by the other colors which are having lower in temperatures. Also, we have studied the different classes of ocean thermal energy conversion systems. It includes open or clued OTEC cycle power plant, closed or Anderson OTEC cycle power plant and hybrid cycle OTEC power plan. We have discussed the working of open cycle, closed cycle and hybrid cycle. Just for your understanding, I am recapitulating the hybrid system one more times. Here warm sea water from the surface is pumped and passes through a heat exchanger called evaporator, where heat exchange will be done with the working fluid of the Rankine cycle. right? So, as soon as the pressurized ammonia that is the working fluid of the Rankine cycle approaches this evaporator, it will produce steam which will be expanded in a turbine and this is connected to the generator from where we can generate electricity. The exit of the turbine need to be cooled because this is at vapor state and for cooling 
cold water from the depth is pumped and passes through this heat exchanger where heat will exchange from hot fluid to the cold fluid and then further heat exchange will be done with the steam which is generated in the flask chamber. So, the steam which is coming out from the evaporator which will be in the flask chamber and then it moves through this pipeline where it is condensed because cold water is coming through this pipeline and heat exchange will be there from the steam to the cold water and then we will get the condensate. So, this condensate is nothing but distillate. So, we can store in the distillation tank and then this hot fluid will be dumped to the ocean surface and also here we can dump to the ocean surface. So, this is how it works, this is a hybrid cycle OTEC power plant. So, it combines both closed and open cycle OTEC power plant. So, this part is closed cycle and this part is open cycle. So, here we are getting electricity in one side and distillate in other side. Okay. Sometimes we can use the water which is having higher mineral content which can be used for other applications like making fodder for the aquatic animals. Now, if we look into the close ocean thermal energy conversion system, so it appears to be something like this. So, this is a heat exchanger may be evaporator and this water is coming from the surface of the this is P, ocean or is a warm water from the surface of Ocean, and then we will have turbine, and then we have generator, then electricity, then we will have condenser. where cold water from depth of sea or ocean and this is condenser and this is turbine and then we will have one more pump here and this is and we have to have pump here. To increase the pressure, so this pump is here. So, what happens here? Warm water from the surface of the ocean has to be pumped through a heat exchanger which is known as the evaporator and then we use secondary fluid here may be ammonia in this closed cycle. So, as soon as this hot water pass through this evaporator what happens this pressurized liquid ammonia approaches this evaporator and then suddenly it will evaporate. Okay? because it will decrease the pressure in this section and then it will expand. When steam is generated, then steam will expand in the turbine 
and then if we connect this turbine to a generator then we can produce electricity. And then exit of the steam or steam which is exiting from the turbine has to be cooled for cooling cold water from the depot chain is used which is pumped through one more heat exchanger called condenser. So, here what happens? Heat exchange will be there from the steam to the cold water and then this will be at saturated liquid condition, saturated liquid. And then pump is applied to increase the pressure of the fluid, then it will complete the cycle. right? And then after cooling of this ammonia vapor, then this water again released to the ocean surface. Okay. So, if we are trying to make one TS diagram of the cycle, it looks something like this, this is a vapor dome, then we can draw at two different temperatures T, S, S is for entropy. So, we can have isentropic and this may be 3, 4, 1, then we will have 2, this is 2 s, this is 4 s. Okay. So, here 1, 2, 3, 4 is the ideal cycle. And here we can define this isentropic efficiency of turbine and compressor. So, I can say 1, 2, 3, 4 process is the ideal cycle with isentropic expansion and compression. Okay. And then we can write 1, 2 s, 3, 4 s is the actual cycle. with non isentropic expansion and compression. Okay. So, this is the turbine part 3 to 4 turbine expansion. So, work done which is developed is like WT and uh, pump work which we have to supply is WP. Okay. This is work developed, this is work required to pump the fluid. right? So, we can now take a small problem and uh, solve for calculation of network done and efficiency of this kind of cycle. It's a Rankine cycle. Here we use organic fluid having low boiling point. So, we will consider a problem now where ammonia is used as working fluid and we take those values at what temperature we need to calculate, then we do the calculation for network done and efficiency. Fine. Also, I would like to share one information about the temperature variation with depth. So, it may be 30, then we have 20, then maybe 10 
and here maybe 100, then maybe we have 200, 300, then maybe 400 here. So, its pattern will be something like this. So, it will be more or less constant up to a depth of say 6 meter, 7 meter, then it decreases suddenly on asymptotically and finally, it will be end up with at around 4 degree C or so. So, this is depth in meter, this is temperature degree centigrade. Okay. So, now let us take the problem. So, a closed cycle OTEC system uses ammonia as working fluid and is installed at a location near to the coast of Tamil Nadu. Okay. The warm water temperature is 29 degrees C and cold water temperature is 8 degrees C at a depth of 600 meter. Consider an allowance of about 5 degree for a temperature difference required in evaporator and condenser for transferring heat and assume that the working fluid ammonia is evaporating at 24 degree C and condensing at 13 degree C. And also isentropic efficiencies of turbine and pump is given as 90 and 80 percentage respectively. So, we need to find out the efficiency of the OTEC plant. As said in the problem, the properties of refrigerant which is ammonia is used in this case at two different temperatures 13 degree C and 24 degree C data is given. Like saturation pressure at this temperature is 6.813 and 24 degree C it is 9.725. Enthalpy at saturated liquid is given, enthalpy at saturated vapor is given, then entropy at saturated liquid and entropy at saturated vapor is given. Also specific volume of saturated liquid is given at two different temperatures. Right? So, let us draw the TS diagram and proceed for the calculation. So, its TS diagram looks something like this. So, this is something like this. So, here nomenclatures are different, so I will not follow this. this is 4, this is 4 s, then we will have 1, 2, then 2 s. Okay. So, it is something like this. Fine. So, to calculate the efficiency, we need to calculate the enthalpies first. Enthalpies at 1, 2 s, 3, then 4 s. Okay. So, H 1 is nothing but the enthalpy of the saturated liquid which is at 13 degree C. So, this temperature is at 13 degree C and this is at 24 degree C. Okay. And if we see the SART, then from that we can calculate H1 which is given to us is 
241.5 kilojoule per kg and the process 1 to 2 represents isentropic compression of a liquid right. So, the process 1 to 2 represents isentropic compression of liquid. Okay. Since the liquid is essentially incompressible, we can find out the ideal pump work W p which can be calculated as at this point what will be the specific volume at 1 multiplied by p 2 minus p 1. Okay. So, this value is given to us is 1.612 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 3 and p 2 minus p 1 this is p 2 at this condition is given which is equal to 9.725 minus 6.813 into 10 to the power of 2 because this is in bar. So, we need to express in kilojoule. So, 1 bar is 10 to the power of 5 Newton per meter square and here we are interested about kilo Newton per meter kilo Pascal okay? or we can say if we multiply with say Newton per meter square. So, if it is kg meter per second square and then you have meter square if we multiply with meter cube per kg then we can get a expression something like a value which is about 0 0.4694 kilojoule per kg. So, that way you can do the calculation. Okay. So, I have rubbed because it will be not visible if I work here. So, now we know the expression for isentropic efficiency efficiency of pump which can be expressed as the enthalpies at 2 minus enthalpy at 1 state 1 then enthalpy at 2 s minus enthalpy at 1. Okay. So, this is given as 0.8 and H 2 s minus H 1 is H 2 minus H 1 and here ideal pump work is given as 0.4694. So, this is the ideal case 1 to 2 is given. So, we can find out what will be the H 2 s minus H 1 which will be the actual pump work. So, it is found to be approximately 0 0.586 kilojoule per kg. Okay. Fine. So, this is nothing but the actual pump work. Okay. And this is 
ideal this is nothing but h 2 minus h 1 ok fine. So, now next thing is how to calculate h 2 s. So, once we know this then from here we can calculate h 2 s is nothing but h 1 plus 0 0.5 h 6. So, if we substitute h 1 here which is known to us this value 241.5 plus 0 0.586 then what we will get is about 242.086 kilojoule per kg. Okay. So, we know now H 2 S then what is next H 3. Okay. So, what is H 3? This is saturated vapor line and this value is given to us this H 3 is nothing but enthalpy of saturated vapor at 24 degree C. So, this value is given to us which is equal to 1464.6 kilojoule per kg. Okay. So, the process 3 to 4 is known as the isentropic expansion of a vapor. So, from here also we can calculate the other values once we know the dryness friction at 4. So, how to calculate the dryness friction at 4 by equating the entropies at 3 and 4. Okay. So, now to calculate the dryness friction at 4 then what we need to do the entropy at condition 3. So, entropy at state 3 and 4 are equal. So, S 3 is equal to S 4. So, S 3 if we look back to the chart this S 3 is for entropy at the temperature of 24 degree C when the fluid is at vapor state. So, it is 5.043 and S 4 is nothing but S S 1 saturated liquid I can say S L plus X 4 then we have saturated vapor minus S at saturated liquid. So, I can draw it again this T S diagram. So, here is the situation. This 3, 4, 4 S, 1, 2, 2 S. Okay. So, we are interested to find out the dryness friction at 4 that is x 4 we want and here is the conditions where we can get the entropy at the saturated vapor and this is the entropy at the saturated liquid okay? at this condition and at this condition values are given to us. Okay? So, this value is from the table we can get it 0.929 what is given to us and x 4 we need to calculate and uh, saturated vapor at that point entropy at the saturated vapor at this point 5.175 minus for saturated liquid it is same value 0 0.929. Okay. 
So, if we do the arrangement, then what we can find out is the dryness friction at state 4, which is found to be 0 0.970. Okay. So, once we know dryness friction at this point, then we can find out the enthalpy at 4. So, which is equal to H4 is equal to H saturated liquid or we can say this is 1 or H1 plus X4 H saturated vapor minus saturated liquid. So, if we substitute those values like 241.5 is the H1, then X value is 0.97, then enthalpy at saturated vapor. So, it is 1456.2 minus this is nothing but H1, 241.5. So, if we do the calculation, it is found to be 1419.8 kilojoule per kg. This is H4. Okay. So, now we know isentropic efficiency of the turbine turbine given to us is 90 percent. Okay. So, let us express this efficiency eta t which is equal to we have actual enthalpy drop enthalpy drop to the ideal enthalpy drop. So, this actual drop will be something like, so this is 0 0.9 and we will have 1464.6 minus H 4 S to 1464.6 minus 1419.8. So, if we do the calculation, then this H 4 S is found to be 1424.3 kilojoule per kg. So, once we are done with this, then we can calculate the net work which is nothing but W t is equal to H 3 minus H 4 s minus we will have H 2 s minus H 1. Okay. So, this is actual turbine work and H 2 S minus H 1 is actual pump work. So, if we substitute the values of H 3, H 4 S, H 2 S and H 1, then we can find out what is W T. So, values can substitute H 4 S is 1424.3 minus 242.1 minus 241.5. So, this will be about 39.7 kilojoule per kg. Okay. And heat input can also be calculated. 
which is nothing but H3 minus H2S. Okay, so enthalpy is as state 3 and 2S are known to us. So, if you substitute the values of H3 and H2S, then this QS is found to be 1 triple 2 with 5 kilojoule per kg. Okay. So, now what we are interested about the efficiency calculation. So, efficiency can be represented by eta which is nothing but network to the heat input and this is found to be 39.7 divided by 1 triple 2.5 and this is about 3.25 percentage ok. So, in this exercise primarily we have tried to calculate the actual pump work then actual turbine work and then finally, the efficiency of a closed cycle ocean thermal energy conversion system. Even though it looks very odd like the efficiency is about 3.25 percentage, but it is not bad because we are not giving any fuel to combust or we use any fuel where we need to pay money or buy it. The energy is free because we are using the another form of solar energy where this energy is stored in ocean water. Okay? So, now let us move to one more exercise. It goes something like water flow rate to evaporator in a closed cycle water power generation system is given to us is 1500 tons per hour. Considering the following parameters, we need to calculate power output of the ideal water plant. Efficiency of the evaporator is given then surface temperature is given, then cold sea water is given at the depth of 800 meter from the surface, then density of the ocean is given, then a specific heat is also given. So, by considering this we can calculate the power output. So, first we are interested about water flow rate to evaporator. which is nothing but 1500 tonnes per hour. So, we can convert it to kg per second. So, it is 3600 and 1 ton is 1000 kg. So, it will be something like 416.66 kg per second and then Th is given as 25. So, we can convert it to Kelvin 25 plus 273 which is nothing but 298 Kelvin and Tc is 5 plus 273 which is 278 Kelvin. And now we are interested about rate of heat supplied by Ocean water to evaporator. because if you see it is something like this. Okay. So, this is the pump and then this is the warm water 
and then we will have this closed cycle. Then we will have this condenser and then one pump is there to pressurize the working fluid. So, it goes something like this we have pump here and this is also heat exchanger. This is evaporator and this is condenser this turbine this is pump again. Okay. So, here the rate of heat supplied by the ocean water to the evaporator is something like mass flow rate is known, CP of water is known, then we know the delta T, right. So, here mass flow rate is 416.66 and CP given to us is 4200 joule per kg Celsius and delta T is 20. So, once we do this calculation, it is found to be 34999.44 kilojoule per second, that means kilowatt. And also, it is given that the evaporator efficiency is 90 percent, okay. then heat supplied will be Zero point nine multiplied by three four nine 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 point four four. Okay, so it will be about three one four nine nine point four nine kilowatt. Okay, and also we know how to calculate Carnot cycle efficiency, which is nothing but one minus T C by T H that means we can say delta T by T H. So, if you substitute the values then it is found to be 6.71 percentage because this is 20 and T H is 298. Okay. So, our concern was to find out power output which is nothing but the Carnot efficiency eta Carnot, then we have heat supplied so if we substitute these values 0 0.0671 multiplied by 31499.49 so what we found is about 2113.6 kilowatt Okay. So, if we maintain this flow rate and then efficiency of evaporator is 90 percent for a closed cycle OTEC power plant, then we get an output of about 2.1 megawatt. Okay. So, I hope you got an idea to calculate the power output of a closed cycle OTEC power plant. So, now we can summarize what we have discussed in this module. So, primarily we have discussed the methodology by which we can use ocean thermal for power generation. Also, we have discussed how other byproducts can be generated and applied in many of the applications. Also, we have analyze closed loop OTEC and solve numerical problems to visualize the performance in actual situation and the analysis shows the conversion efficiency is low in this kind of power plant. However, this kind of power plant is always encouraged because we are not consuming any fuel for generation of electricity, we are only utilizing the solar energy which is stored in the surface of the ocean. I hope you got an overview of ocean thermal energy conversion system. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.